outfits and pillowcase that was so intricate. It took me a while, but it was so beautiful. I was very proud of it when I was done, and I gave it to my granny. And all I know is those three basic stitches. And if you have enough patience, you can basically create anything. So, let's get started. I'm going to show you how to do it. Alright, here we are. So, to start out, you're going to want to get an embroidery hoop. And then, you're going to want to place the wide end up. And sometimes it'll have little words at the bottom. And then, you're just going to take those and put the second embroidery hoop on top. So it looks like this. And then there will be a little screw right here. And you're going to want to screw that away from you. If it's still just a little saggy, you can pull on it at the, at the sides. But this is pretty taut. It's good. Okay, so now I have this embroidery floss that I have separated into three strands, each with two threads on it. Uh, normal embroidery floss will have six will have six threads in it um, but you need to separate those because that is too thick for most embroidery projects so I'm going to sh now I'm going to show you how to thread it now this is the easiest for me when once I got the hang of it so what you do is you take your needle and you fold it over like that and then you push it up like that and then slide out the needle and then push it up again. Okay. And now I'm going to show you the first basic, the first basic stitch. Uh, this is called the stem stitch. Um, it can be used for uh, different just curvy things so you're going to want to make your first stitch just a normal one and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to estimate how long you want the next stitch and then you're going to come up like that and then put it down in the previous hole Like that. This method makes sure that makes sure that the stitches are very close together, and it just makes it look very even and nice. How? And if we did it a different way, just like this, trying to do trying to make it close, it creates this gap. And it just makes the stitches look a little bit more clumsy. So this method just makes the stitches uh, a bit, I, I wanna say daintier, but that's the not, not the right word. But <laughs> the next stitch that we're gonna learn is called the Lazy Daisy. So you just come up in the middle and then go down basically in the same hole. And then you're going to want to leave a loop right there. And then it depends on how long you want it. I'm going to stick my needle right there and then just put your needle through the hoop. and then pull it through. And then the last step, you just stick it down right next to that loop. And that's the Lazy Daisy stitch. And then this is the last stitch that we're going to do. It's 
called the French Knot. When you're planning the little diagram for your stitching, um, it's usually just represented with a dot. So you're going to want to come up where that little dot is, and then you're going to want a longer thread for this, otherwise it won't really work. So you're going to want to hold it here, and the best and the best piece of advice is just to not let go. <laughs> so you're going to wrap it three or four times. And then stick it down in. And then just pull it through like that. And that is a French knot. So those were the three basic stitches that I wanted to show you. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you on Friday with a sketch comedy. Thanks again. Bye-bye.